Welcome back to Click Connect. I'm your host, Craig. And today we have another industry leader. We're going to be talking about hotels, pace financing, low carbon fund, Title 24, and so much more. But before we bring our guests out, I would like to thank our good friends at Red Roof Franchising for being our production partner from the beginning and bringing you this show. Without them and without you, we don't have a show. Danny and I have got nothing to do. So we definitely appreciate Red Roof. And you should give them a call if you're looking for an alternative brand. Tell Matt that Craig and producer Danny sent you that he'd love to hear from you. So we've got Mr. Ron Adichie, Vice President, Pace Equity LLC, joining the conversation right now. Ron, how are you? Doing well, trying to stay dry. It's supposed to be yeah. uh, dry in California. Not today, though. <laughs> well, yeah, right now down in Newport Beach, it is uh, the sun is shining just a little bit. So hopefully that's uh, a good sign that we're going to dry out for a little bit. Um, yeah. Hey, Ron, do me a favor. Would you tell the audience about yourself and Pace Equity LLC, please? Yeah, uh, sure. I kind of been in kind of hospitality probably by, you know, kind of by default, probably for the last decade or so. Uh, originally, I had a EB-5 regional center way back in the day when we thought EB-5 was a good way to finance hotels. And yeah. uh, when it wasn't, it dried up, uh, looked at uh, pace financing as an alternative, uh, you know, financing vehicle. I was a developer before that. And then uh, the founder of the firm, uh, Bo Engman, uh, actually and talked to me, we looked at pace financing for some other projects that we were looking on. And uh, with my background in hospitality, he asked uh, that I come on board and help uh, work with him on the West Coast initially. And then at one point was pretty much covering all the hospitality uh, throughout the the country. And Pace Equity is probably one of the, the larger firms uh, in the, you know, the C-Pace uh, space that we have now. It's become a really good mechanism for a lot of uh, hoteliers to be able to look at you know new build construction as well as renovations uh that they have it's very very creative financing that uh again it was it was popular then but even more so now with the state of the capital markets and we've been very very blessed probably we've we've had probably our busiest year last year and as an industry i think it's like close to 2.2 billion wow. in uh you know financing kind of placed not just in hospitality but in all asset classes and uh, we've been very, very fortunate to be a, a large part of that growth. I love it. And, I, and I, I think if you're doing a new construction deal or even if you're repositioning a hotel asset, if you don't take advantage of pace financing, you're missing the boat because it is very affordable financing. And I like the terms. More and more lenders are on board with that. It does have to be approved in certain in, in the state that you're building the hotel or repositioning the, the asset, I should say. But would you tell the audience, what is Pace Financing for the few people out there that may not understand it? Yeah, so uh, its acronym is uh, Property Assessed Clean Energy. And we specialize in the commercial side, which is commercial CPACE. Which, so people use the acronym CPACE. And what we basically use is we look at the actual energy um, sustainable uh, type of efficiencies that are actually in the building improvements that you have. Originally, it was kind of intended as, it's basically state uh, federal legislation that is adopted at a state level, and then at a state level, each local municipality. So we use their local uh, assessing, tax assessing authority to help us get paid back in terms of for our type of financing. So the type of eligible, we call it eligible construction or cons uh, conservation measures, which are ECMs, Things like uh, building envelope, uh, plumbing, electricity, MEP, um, you know, you'd look at insulation, roofing, all of those are eligible construction measures that we can finance through our type of financing that we have. It's specialized and it is like you had mentioned on a state by state, municipality by municipality basis. And then what is the benefit on that side is that we can actually fund those said um, improvements on a non-recourse, fully amortized basis and to you as a hotelier um, or an owner, it benefits you in the sense that it's below the line financing that you have in place. You don't have to tap into your credit lines uh, that you have. And it's much, much cheaper than uh, mezzanine or preferred financing, uh, pref equity financing. Yeah. And there's going to be no dilution in ownership you know, that you do have. Yeah. So there's a lot of flexibility that it has. And in many ways, um, 
it's just uh, an area where people just didn't realize they had it. So just like you have a tax assessment, like you have, you know, getting public schools in your, your neighborhood, we're the same piece. Like you said, on your tax bill, it'll just say PACE assessment. And that's how we get paid back. And that's the benefit of what we do. And you can do it at a very competitive uh, rate as well. See, and that's the thing that I also like about it. It's built into your tax bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not a second mortgage or deed of trust for like California is a trustee state. Hawaii is a mortgage state. And there's a difference between the two, Um, you know, and, and it being in, in the uh, tax bill just makes it so much easier. And again, Mm -hmm. it's, you're not tapping a line of credit or anything else. And, and, and I love it. And, you know, this isn't just for new construction, you're repositioning. So your new roofing material, you know, you know, if you've got an older building that the envelope is is pretty weak, and mm-hmm. you know you're putting in new glazing, new, you know, uh, new new roof, new other components. This is all eligible for that right. financing, and it is so much less than a, a pref financing or you know you know some some bridge financing that's out there as well. Um, Now, it's not in all 50 states yet. And as Mm -hmm. I recall, our last conversation, um, Pace just got approved in the Aloha state. Am I right on that? Yes, you are. (laughs) There we go. Yes. Yes. So I see Rod making a lot of trips. As a matter of fact, I've got to get you dialed into uh, Hogan Hospitality. They're... uh, Uh, and they will also be at the conference as well. So, um, you know, now are, are you finding that your lenders that are making construction loans, are they getting more and more educated and understanding and approving of this? Because a few years ago, that seemed to be, you know, the battle of the century. The lenders didn't want it. Is it was on the tax bill? Does it have priority over us? Blah, blah, blah. How has is, how is that changed for the benefit no. of the banks, for you as the pace, C-PACE finance part, and for the owners? That's a really good question you bring up. And yes, um, I think prior to the pandemic and prior to the, um, the, you know, the capital markets kind of adjustments that you've had, banks were kind of in a very stern position where they'll just draw the line in the sand but what's happening yeah. now is that they still want to maintain the relationship with a lot of their their strong sponsors that they have. Um, they've been kind of not necessarily forced, but they've met their concentration limits. So they tend to bring pull back on their loan to cost, the LTC. Right. So in years past, you could probably get to 75, maybe even 80 percent LTC. But that's those days are coming and gone. Right. And now what you're seeing is maybe they may be at about 50 percent uh, LTC. And then for a sponsor, they still need to be kind of at at least minimum 65 to 70% to kind of make it pencil. So then they right. layer us on knowing that we're kind of helping them de-risk because we close 100% uh, at, you know, at uh, closing, at the, uh, the capital staff closing. So it helps them there. And the list is probably about 350 banks you know, uh, throughout the country that have already consented for pace and growing. So most of the new deals that I do are actually with banks that have never done a pace deal. A lot of credit unions are a lot more uh, amenable to this. I've done, I'm underwriting one right now with the USDA loan. They can go and guarantee up to 80 and they'll do a 20% and they will use 5% of my pace as that equity. So there's a lot of different ways. um, Again, it's really people evaluating that, is there another viable path or out of the box solution to be able to go and do this? So your point is still very conservative, but there are a lot of mechanisms that we've worked with banks on that have allowed them to be more comfortable. We can put our assessment, maybe you know, we could put 12 to 24 months in an escrowed account like you do for taxes, then they feel that they're more comfortable knowing that that's in place. And then at the same time, it's really getting them to understand that maybe it's a $10 million pace assessment they had as an assistant loan, uh, an associated loan. It's not the entire yeah. 10 million that, ex- it doesn't accelerate. It's just what is in arrears. Once they right, get over right. that, you know, fundamental kind of uh, stigma, it becomes a lot more open. And we've seen more and more of that happening. And like I said, we've had our busiest year, um, you know, in the history of our company last year. So uh, we've been, you know, again, sometimes it's just 
there's always solutions, especially in a, you know, in a troubled market. And we've been being able to be that solution for a lot of uh, sponsors. Oh, yeah. I, you guys are definitely at the top of the food chain when it comes to helping on on that that shortfall that you know a lot of people are, are having on and and i'm gonna use new construction again because that's just mm-hmm. easier yeah. um but you know with you know with the pace financing in there and the lenders now approving it now the pace financing is assumable as well to a new owner correct because it's correct. built into the the, the tax bill so mm-hmm. it's kind of up to the buyer to do their due diligence. Okay, okay, it's, it's been disclosed to them. They know it's there. So are we mm-hmm. going to assume that? Are we going to change the sales price based on assumption? Or are we going to pay it off? And there's correct. no penalties, repayment penalties for an early payoff, correct? So there is a correction there. The answer to part of your, uh, part of your description is true. Uh, it is assumable, like taxes, they kind of run with the land. We would yeah. have to build in a prepay. So typically okay. what we would do on a new build construction is that, you know, there's going to be kind of a lockout period during construction, and then we can kind of do a step down prepay. And okay. obviously if you want maximum flexibility, we just have to build that in. So in most cases, a typical, um, you know, a typical ho- hotel deal that I've done is we can do a five, four, three, two, one to zero right. type of a prepay out, or we've done some where we can actually, you know, they, they know for sure, that they need it by X date, then we just have to do a yield maintenance based on where okay. it's at. And it's just, it's just math at that point. Because basically yeah. on your exit, you just have to kind of do the math. And again, they just need to know what the risk tolerance is. So the answer to your question is yes and possibly yes. <laughs> okay. On the now, on the uh, escrowed money that's on hold, is is the first mortgage trustee holder holding that account in their their financial institution or is it staying as an open account say with a title insurance company uh, typically to be in a title you know a title company you know because it's okay. truly escrowed per se but every deal right. is a little bit different you know on that side and obviously with the downfall of uh you know Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic Bank yeah. there's just these DACA rules that are all in place so I would leave it to my underwriters to talk with the the, the partnering banks to determine what the right way to actually address that question, but it's a very good one, very good one. Good, I like that. And I, all I can say on those two banks is, should be playing in Bitcoin. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> shouldn't do it, shouldn't do it. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I like that idea because, you know, coming from a title background, okay, it's the neutrality. You know, the money's there, and you know, it's safe. Okay, Mm -hmm. and it it just works for everybody at that point. Um, You've got a new low carbon fund. Would you tell Mm -hmm. the audience about that, please? Yeah, so PACE in its uh, history, it's been around going on close to 10 years now. And um, actually, my, you know, my my partner, the founder of the company, Bo Engman, was one of the founding members of the CPACE Alliance when it had come in place. So like with everything, if you use the analogy of like a, say, a basketball game, um, I would say that EB5 is kind of in ending of the fourth quarter, maybe even going into overtime right now. Whereas you look at pace as an industry, we're probably in the first quarter uh, coming into that. So realizing that you always need to look at improving kind of the offering and providing the value add, uh, Bowen, you know, Bo basically comes from an engineering background uh, from Johnson Controls. He basically said, why don't we really look at the true essence of what PACE financing was all about, was about creating more efficient buildings. So we still have our CPACE offering and our standard fund that we do have, but we then created a a second fund, which is called Cirrus Low Carbon. We partnered up with the New Building Institute to have different criteria in terms of building design, that if you are able to be uh, kind of address those types of metrics, either in a prescriptive meaning on a, you know, you check the box type of way, or we can build, we could do a building modeling of it in terms of energy efficiency. You're able to be able to get a uh, Cirrus certified on our end. So we could obviously market it. That's at the very minimal level, but the most important piece, we're going to actually extend you more efficient capital. So compared to our standard fund in the market, we can probably go maybe 60, possibly 70 basis points below that market. You can feel that. So when you think about it, 
there's lead oh. and you know, you know lead platinum gold that's just documentation it's a nice statue you have or no, no, little decal we still have all that as well with this but we actually hit your pocketbook we can actually hit the sponsor and say bottom line you do this you do x and y is what you'll yeah. get so i just did a deal yeah. in um in las vegas the largest c pace um offering in the state as it stands today um just based on us getting them qualified for Sirius for 20 million dollars of Sirius, we saved them close to three million dollars in overall wow. interest savings and you know energy efficiencies and low carbon and and, and to top all that it was close to i think uh, 4200 tons of metric low carbon savings they're going to have during the duration of the prop so it's like wow it's kind of nice to be esg you know, kind of, you know, basically responsible, but hey, yeah. if you hit your if you hit your pocketbook at the same time, that's what we thought we're onto something, and we're and we're the only ones in the market that have this, because you have to get a uh, you know a Dun and Bradstreet rating to have this specific type of cut carbon, uh, you know, bond rating. So you and I can buy into this fund. So you, you know, we, we can actually go on the public market and buy into this because it's basically it. targeting investors that are very very ESG conscious on that side. I love that. And that that's always been the rub with whether it is a lead certification or something else. Mm -hmm. Now, I've always looked at it that if you don't do that, you are accelerating the obsolescence of your physical asset. Correct. Okay. And I I got into talking with U.S. Green Building Council and various others decades ago when everybody was going, oh, my God, this is so expensive, you know. Yeah. Um, but at that point in time when, when I was getting my education from LEED that I said, okay, no, this is really a good thing. And if you're not doing it, you are making your, 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 your you, you're accelerating that, that obsolescence. And Correct. at that point, are you going to get your dollars back? Now, the other thing that I see is, you know, you've had a lot of buildings, especially down here in Orange County, uh, Irvine Company and Seagramson's a, a number of years ago went back to all their office buildings and got a LEED certification as they were renovating them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, not only, you know, tax credits and everything else, but it, it slowed down the obsolescence of some of those older buildings. Mm -hmm. um, and and I just think it's something that's that's a must do. Uh, which is going to bring us into our next topic, which is <laughs> Title 24. Oh, no. Uh, and, and <laughs> you know, how, how do the qualifies qualifications <laughs> for Title 24 with your efficient cap, with a more efficient capital? How does that work? Well, I couldn't have asked for a better segue, Craig, because uh, be, based on um, states, California, Hawaii followed suit with California. Yeah. Title, total, title 24, Cal Green, pretty much is like 98 Point five five percent the way there. So there's going to be very very minimal amount that you'll need to do, and in most cases, um, it's pretty much you build you you build the code, you're pretty much there. So California, yeah. I'm loving life, and it's just basically, I don't know who's out there in terms of the audience, but Ashri 2016 um, that we would need to do just with a slight lift there are the IECC 2018 codes, which California is already above that. Right. So we're so California is very easy for me to say with confidence, new build and major renovation, uh, we could do that. The key on my side is that it's never too early to engage myself or my engineers right. because the earlier you're on the process. So if you're already in CDs, it's just so difficult to make any potential. We can still do it. But then, as you know, change orders and everything call in place. So the ideal scenario is coming in and around, you know, SD schematic drawings or design drawings get my engineers in place and then whatever happens whether you choose to go with our financing or not you will have a uh serious design document that will stay with the stay with the building and that's obviously like you said it enhances the actual marketability and the actual technical you know the obsolescence of your building that you're actually ahead of the curve uh on that side so again um the earlier we get in the more you know surety we'll have that we're going to get you approved quickly and then they can then say, hey, there's no there's no uncertainty that we can get that approved. And then we'll actually give you design guidance to help make it a more efficient building at minimal cost. 
I couldn't agree more with you. I'm a, I'm a big proponent that early on, you know, one, once you've got the property tied up, you bring everybody in. I bring mm-hmm. in designers, architects, see who gets my vision for the property. And then I want you and your team there because once we start going to, to documents, it's like, okay, yeah, we're going to use pace on this. You know, how, how can we maximize this particular tool for this particular asset? And, you know, it's, it's, I dislike change orders. Probably it's number two or three <laughs> on my list of things that I don't like. Um, so I, it's always early on bring you guys in early. So if, yep. if you guys get nothing else from this show, call Ron early. Okay. <laughs> he will help you. That's why he is here because I have faith in him. Okay. And his <laughs> team. Um, so, you know, I, I, let's talk about your engineers a little bit before we move on to our lightning round. Um, what is it exactly that they do or a, a good overview, I should say, of what they do and how they can help the owner and the, and the, uh, the project move forward. Yeah. So we just did, I guess, can share a good, uh, learning. It was a, uh, one of the major flags that starts with an M. So I think you can understand who me, that was. Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we had one of their, uh, one of their big dual branded, um, uh, sites that we had in place and they already have what's nice about what we're doing. And I've, presented this already to all the major flags and some of the more boutique flags, they like it because it's aligned with what they want to do with their ESG initiatives as well. So what they'll do is they'll actually get aligned with their architects, uh, the sponsors, architects, the MEP engineers, structural, uh, need be the structural engineers, because and going back to what you said about California, California also includes seismic. So to be able to hit uh, the amount of monies or amount of funding you would want to have, that's something that is very, very doable here. So on the engineers, what they would do is kind of have a discovery piece of where you are as is, kind of look at your design plans that you have put in place. And it's called comp checks that you do in terms of how they're looking at the actual, the layout of the design and the actual internal components to the, you know, the, the actual um, components that are actually doing. So a lot of it could be, you know, the actual windows you have, what is it? Is it so many X X amount of millimeters? Maybe you might need to add additional 0.01 millimeters on that, so a little bit more filament. But that's the level of detail that they can get into. And if they get into it early on, you're actually building that into the design drawings that you have. And being that, like, you know, Bo, the founder of our firm who actually spearheaded this initiative, uh, and Trisha Baker, they came from a background of engineering background from Johnson Controls. So that's the level of uh, background that our engineering team have. And they then will actually present this actual schematic report. They'll give forecasted modeling uh, information. And then at the same time, we then have to then monitor back to the National Building Institute on an annual basis, the performance of the building. So to me, it's actually, once you sign on the dotted line, it's really, and you get, and you get approved, it's just actually, you're looking at the actual building as an asset that you can actually show how it's performing as it pertains to low carbon outputs. And that's a benefit and you can market it that way as well. Love it. I love it. That's, that's great. All right, my friend, are you ready for our lightning round? <laughs> oh man. I feel like I'm on Jay Shetty. I like this. <laughs> hey, you know, this is it. You know, we're, we're part game show here. So, okay. Uh, okay. So Ron, it, Producer Danny's going to put two minutes on the clock. It's word association, just the first thing that pops into your head. And we've only had four guests go over the two minutes. No pressure. Don't worry, there's no prizes either, but, you know, it's, it's good. <laughs> All right, here we go, starting now. Favorite sport? Basketball. Corvette or Porsche? Porsche. Movie or play? Movie. Favorite band, group, duo, or solo artist? Old school, earth, wind, and fire. Nice. I love that answer. Social media. Uh, I'm old school, so probably Facebook. I, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the right answer right there. Aisle or window? Definitely aisle. Streaming or cable? Streaming. New construction. 
uh, new construction. Yes. <laughs> Best restaurant in your city. Oh, Palo Alto. I would say Evia. Nice vacation international or us international perfect you did that with 46 seconds left <laughs> there you go my friend i love it okay so you said new construction i think new construction is certainly Pace financing and your new low carbon fund are the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, those are critically important finance tools that can make or break a new construction project. Right. Um, now, you know, it, it could be a hotel. It could be a hotel enhanced mixed use with a condo component and office and retail. Um I just don't think anybody's really building new office buildings right now. I I think that Converting. market's a little, yeah, yeah, that market's a little off. Uh, I'm not sure about retail, but, uh, you know, that seems to always have its issues and we'll continue to have those into the future as well. Uh, multifamily, um, you know, student housing, a number of other asset classes you can touch. It's not Correct. just hospitality. And if, for some of these owners that are watching this show, they've got a diverse portfolio. Could be student housing, could be multifamily, could be hospitality, assisted living, on and on and on. So you can touch all of the various components of commercial real estate. Am I correct on that? Very much so. You you brought up uh, you know for sale condo is the only asset class that's kind of a a dotted line. Yeah. Um, but it just depends on the deal itself uh, that we look at. And then, as you pointed out, in addition to new build construction, PIPs, uh, renovations, we also have what's called a retroactive look back uh, capacity with PACE. So in, Ca in California, what we can do is a uh, you look at a COC or renovation or the last installed eligible construction measure, we can look back 36 months. So you right. do that and then we can actually retroact. So a lot of, I did a couple of deals where they needed to kind of replenish their interest reserves. Um, yeah. The pandemic kind of wiped them out, but they, you know, relatively new uh, hotel, which was like 24 months in, we, we, we earmarked that with the actual administrator for the state. And then based on that, we were able to basically plug another 5 million for them in. We saw that in their old piece and they were just ecstatic because they didn't yeah. have to tap into their line of credit with their bank. And then based on that, they just went across the board. They, they, we fully amortized that. It wasn't a full 30-year amortization because, you know, we're, ta we're talking it was probably 24 months in, so close to 27 months fully amortized. And, you know, it was something that was a very, very good solution for them. So that's, yeah. you know, and it, it, depending upon the state, California is the most generous at 36 months. Yeah. Nevada is at 24. Hawaii will be 36. Um, Texas is 24 but at minimum 24 months look back that they will allow. And then we could also do, um, you know, when we do the PACE financing, we close it right at uh, the capital stack closing. We'll get you through the construction period with an interest only period. And in wow. California, we'll allow you to do interest only for the next 12 months to get you to stabilization. Uh, see, that's outstanding. Those are details that I don't think anybody really knows. And I got to tell you, you find me another $5 million for that capital stack, that closing <laughs> dinner we're having just got elevated to a whole new level. Okay. Um, you know, it's, I, I'm loving this. Now, do you guys also, and you look back, if they've done, let's say they did a PIP and mm -hmm. they brought in a cost segregation person, does that help your process? Is that a must? Is it a, we should have, did you do this? Do you know about cost, cost seg? What, where does that fit in? I mean, we'll work with the cost, you know, the cost seg guys. They're more yeah. on a tax perspective on right. their end. We just basically look at your eligible construction measures that you have, which is okay. basically going to be tied through a construction budget with a schedule value and SOV by trade. Yeah. Or we would just audit back and reconcile off your construction draws. So we kind of work in parallel with the cost seg. You know, okay. cost seg is its own world in and of itself. Right. Yeah. But we just need to make sure that we can have a line of sight reconciliation of said improvement was done 
on said property and said APN. And based on that, it was done within a 36 month period of the COC of the CFO. That's ah, gotcha. that it. Yep. Great. That's wonderful. Okay, Ron, time for a shameless plug. How can people get a hold of you and take advantage of you for these financing opportunities that you have? Well, yeah, definitely. You know, reach out to me. Um, you know, my email, I can actually, cir- Craig has my email if you want to circulate it on that end. It's radachi, all one word, at pace-equity.com. Um, even call me on my cell. Uh, I, I kept my 808 number. It's 808-375-4499. And usually I'm at most of the uh, industry conferences. I'll be seeing you uh, down in March, down at Click uh, yep. as well. Uh, but again, you know, anything comes up and, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, we can also help. I have a, a very, very um, kind of narrowed list of PACE uh, partner senior lenders as well. So it can help you nice. with that part of the stack. Not that that's not what we, you know, we're really meant to do, but we're kind of like the tail wagging the dog because of the type of financing that we have. But in order to get deals done, those are things that, uh, you know, I can help you out with on that side as well. And, you know, very agnostic, working with, you know, cooperative, working with brokers. But I let the sponsors and the owners drive that decision. And um, at the end of the day, we just want to get you guys the most efficient capital stack. And that's it. At the end of the day, you've got a track record with these guys. They understand pace financing. They understand your your new low-carbon fund. So it takes out some of the brain damage. And when I was on the title side, I was always bringing new lenders to the table. I don't know an owner of any asset class that isn't always looking for new sources of capital. Okay. Sure. That's just, that's just part of the programming. And if, yeah. if you've got it, they owe you one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love that. Ron, thank you for joining the conversation. You've got an open invitation to come back anytime, my friend. You take care and I'll see you at click seven. Okay. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Thank you, our audience, for joining us today. Another industry leader, first-time guest, call Ron at Pace Financing. I, I'm telling you, this, this is a great resource. This is a great group of people and a tool that you should be using on a regular basis, okay? I'd also like to thank our good friends and production partner, Red Roof Franchising, for making this show possible for you guys today. Give Matt a call. You're looking for a new brand or a great alternative. They have they have got a dual branded asset prototype you're going to love. They've also got an extended stay property you're going to love. And they've got a soft brand. And, you know, they've got their economy brands that they're, they're known for. Give Matt a call. Let him know the producer Danny and I sent you. He'd love to hear from you. And then you heard Ron, March 6th and 7th. California Lodging Investment Conference at the Weston South Coast Plaza Hotel. Join us. We've still got some seats. We'd love to have you join us. It's a full day of development, education, networking. We've got owners, operators, management companies, trade associations. Jason Reeder from AHLA is going to bring us up to date on all the legislative issues in California. We've also got Bruce Ford telling us about the construction pipeline. He's a Crowd favorites, you know that. Uh, We've got three panels, all general session, so you're not going to miss anything. And lots of networking time. Go to cliconference.com and register soon, please. Thank you. And as I'm fond of saying, be kind, share your knowledge. Now go be amazing. 